Hey, welcome to Tough Guys. On this episode, we're gonna be unboxing, setting up, kind of going through the initial process of a 12 inch dual bevel uh, DeWalt miter saw. Um, it's my first DeWalt saw, so I figured why not show you guys what's going on with it. I did have to open the box at the store to do like a blade switch out thing, which I'll explain when I get to that point. So the unboxing is kind of like, I already unboxed it a little bit at Lowe's and then brought it home. So anyways, I wanted to show you guys the new saw. Let's get it set up and I'll show you some details about it now. Right, now that we've got it out of the box and kind of just briefly set up here on our little stand uh, here's a quick overview um, first impressions I like the way everything feels everything is smooth everything moves very well um, there's a little uh, trigger guard here which I really think is cool you have to kind of pull it over to be able to depress the button so kids getting their hands up there if they don't know how to put that button back they'll be safe I'll go through some of the details as we go through the setup process, but just wanted to say initial thoughts are great. It's a good weight. It's nice. Everything seems to work. Um, let's get that blade installed and then we'll start going through all the components. And for the blade install on one of these, you've got your blade guard and you get that up out of your way. They give you a little tool out of the box. You have your nut driver on the end and then a star tip on the other end, which basically feeds into this bolt here. You've got a little, little bolt you need to take out. And actually, you're not going to take it out, you're just going to loosen it. And that'll allow us to move this guard up and out of the way a little bit so we can get to this. And that bolt will hold your guard out of the way, as you can see right there. Once I get it out a little bit, let me show you guys the distance out there. So it's not out all the way, you don't want to take it out of the way. Now I can set the blade guard on there. And the issue I was talking about with the blade, it's supposed to come with a 60T apparently in the box and it did not. So the people at Lowe's gave me this blade here and they took the 32T blade off of there that came on the saw. So this is the one they gave me. This is the one we're gonna be putting on. And there is a button here on the other side that will lock this in place because otherwise this is just going to keep turning forever. So let me show you guys that little button. So here on the other side, when you're twisting, this will lock this bolt in place so that you can twist that off of there. And those bolts are reverse thread. Just a quick disclaimer on that. These are reverse thread, so it's not righty tighty lefty loosey anymore. go and there's your bolt right there take off the outside locking ring there you go and then follow the instructions for your blade you have some arrows here telling you which way it's going to turn teeth facing towards you it's going to turn this way Blade is in place. Locking ring back on. And bolt. Remember, lefty tidy, righty loosey. There, that's locked back in place now it down the last thing you want to do obviously is make sure that this guard is back engaged here and that this screw this little bolt is screwed back down which is gonna keep your guard in place like it should be and not rattling around or getting in the way of anything it shouldn't be getting in the way of there's that and there we go so I do have it plugged in temporarily here. I want to test it just to make sure everything's working before I keep going. And let's hear how it sounds. Sounds really great, runs really smooth. It's 
sliding mechanism works really well and I like that. So let's go through some of the components of the saw before we make some cuts. So the first thing, let's talk about these miter fences. So they are adjustable. On the back side, you have a little kind of a, a flippy tab here and you can slide these things in or out and actually remove them all the way. Um, I'm just gonna leave them kind of set generically for now. And you have one of those on both sides. So this one also has that. And then here's your little insert there for your clamp. And there is one of those for both sides. So I'll show you guys that clamp here in a second. As far as the, the, the front here, to adjust your angle for different cuts, and you can see here they've got everything marked, all the different degrees, all the way over here to 60, and back this way you've got over to 50, which is only gonna let you pull to basically a 45. So when you pull this little handle up, you can depress this button, and as you're holding it, you slide, and then let off when you get close, and it actually has some predetermined stopping points. So as I get close to 45, you hear it kind of click into place. And now it's not gonna move again. I would need to depress again. And it's gonna lock in, locks in, locks in at 15, locks back in at zero. So that's how that works. Um, generally speaking, you wanna screw this down to something, or maybe you have like the DeWalt stand that it goes on, but for me, it just, I've always had my miter saws just kind of screwed down to this tabletop. So I'm gonna screw it down. That way, when I'm, when I'm moving this back and forth doing projects, the whole saw is not gonna move around on the table. That's what you don't want to happen. So that's how that piece works. And a few other quick components. This is that button that locks the bolt on the blade so that you can loosen it. This obviously goes up and down. That's for you to cut things. You got a nice little handle here to hold it and grab it and carry it around if you need to. And then here's that power button again. So again, if you just press it, it won't go in. You have to swoop your finger over that little button and then it will let you depress. So kind of a cool safety feature. So you can't accidentally hit that thing. And then here on the top, this is our lock for the slide. So if I tighten that down, the saw cannot slide now. So that's what that is. So you loosen that up and the saw will slide uh, really freely, actually. It's very, very smooth. Um, here's where our bag for dust would attach, and we'll go over some of those components here in a sec, like the, uh, the clamp. We'll take a look at those two things that came in the box. There's your power cord that goes down to the power. And then let's take a look at these components here. These are basically everything involved back here is for that bevel cut. Um, this is your release, so if you loosen this up, the saw will be able to slide you can see here. Um, so that's what that is for. Um, I'm gonna lock it back in place here really quick. Um, these other components here, these are I believe called pawls and they're for crown cuts. Um, I'm not as familiar with cutting crowns so I'm not gonna spend too much time on those. I may end up doing like a video on that but these are the adjustment screws for those so that you can move the bevel. And it does have dual bevel so back on the other side over here You've got the same way to track on this side. So there are some components back here I'm not 100% with. I'm just kind of doing a quick overview. I know everything back here is concerning the bevel. And then as I showed you before, your slide lock is up here. Saw slides back and forth. Lock your bevel in at zero and check your square before you start making cuts if you're concentrating a bunch on straight cuts. And then other than that, there you go. Side again, this is your depth adjustment screw. And then you would lower this down. And basically this thing is gonna hit that and then you can adjust because it's gonna stop the depth of the saw as it, as it teeters down on your cutting. So kind of a cool feature and it's actually in a really nice place. I really do like that. Uh, there's kind of a wing nut to lock it in place. So that's your depth control there. And another quick note, the little wrench actually stores inside of the saw. It's right down here, which is pretty cool. And then it clicks in place so you can't lose that thing. And it's also not in the way. You don't really see it anywhere. So that's another really cool feature that that thing has a place to go. Okay, here's that clamp mechan mechanism. Um, this just screws down, and then this piece is the part that locks in around the back, and then the whole thing can kind of swivel around. So we'll put this in place in a second can you can see, can see how that looks. And here is the bag accessory that hooks onto the back of the saw and basically allows you to collect some of the sawdust. It's obviously not gonna collect everything, and you can see right here in the back, that's where all the sawdust is gonna hopefully go when we start making cuts. We will find out. A lot of these saws, 
these things don't work that great, so we'll test out the DeWalt one. So we've got that clamp set in place here. And you can see as it, as it will turn around, you may have to work with your, with your miter fence there to get it where you need it to go. And then you can also loosen the top to bring it down this direction, or you can tighten it. So you may want to have this preset if you're making a ton of cuts, then it works out really great for you. Then back here in the back is where you hook your uh, vacuum bag up. Um, this thing sticks out really far off the back side. I don't know how much I like that. Let me show you guys. That thing sticks out really far. Seems like they could have done a better design, just maybe had it droop. So I don't really know if I like that because I have to have the saw so far out in order for that to work. But we'll see what we can figure out on it to make it a little bit better. All right, let's test out some cuts. I'm gonna start off with just getting this thing all the way back. And we'll see how that goes. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And we've got some super, super smooth cuts. I'm so happy with that. It's great, sounds great, no vibration, feels awesome. And we've got just one small stack of two by four cuts and I just wanted to compare. So here's the dust that missed the bag out here. Um, you know, this is the dust that missed. Not too bad when you consider. And let's take a look at how much was actually captured. I mean, that is a ton of sawdust captured in this bag. That is awesome. So overall, putting it through its paces, uh, the saw's done really well. Um, this is that blade that we got with it, the uh, 60 tooth. Um, we've put it through a couple of projects um, since we've had it. Uh, dust management does pretty good just having the bag. I mean, it catches a ton of dust as you go. I mean, you're still gonna get some, but it's nothing like that rigid saw. That was just horrible and embarrassing for them. Um, other than that, uh, the overall, the saw's been really good and we've been super happy with it. Um, and that's what I got. All right, so it's been about a month, full disclaimer, since we've had this saw. We've been using it um, a ton, all kinds of projects. Um, it's been working out really, really well for us so far. The blade has no wobble. Um, everything cuts really, really well. I don't really know much more to say than other than that it's great. Um, it, we haven't had any issues with it. Dust management is good. Um, I've tried hooking the vacuum to it and it, I really just don't care. The, the bag on there is, is good enough and seems to work really well. Um, other than that, I really, really like the saw. So I just wanted to kind of wrap up this video and say, if you're needing a 12 inch saw and you need a sliding version of it um, and dual bevel, the DeWalt is a great option. Um, if you've seen our channel, we have a video on the rigid version, which turned out horribly for me. Some people love it. I'm glad that you had good luck with it. 
I did not, it was horrible. Um, so anyways, thanks for watching this video. Please consider subscribing if you love what we do and come check us out for some more videos here in the future. Thanks.